Axis, a consultant here at Valiantis. In this video, I'm going to go over the Jira Automation Action Lookup Table. Lookup Table is an action you probably always see in the list, don't understand what it does, and therefore haven't touched it. I personally had that experience. However, I learned it is not as daunting as it looks, and the Lookup Table is quite useful. Let's dive into what it is. The Lookup Action is simply an if-else block in a table form. In a Lookup Table, you have three components. You have a table variable name, which is the name you give to reference the data in the table. This is very similar to how you create a variable in the automation to reference a data stored in that value. You have the key column. The key is the name of the field that you are looking to compare to. You do not have to call out the exact name of the field, but you do have to insert the values of the field exactly as they are in the context. Automation for Jira will look at the issue and find where the value in that key exactly matches the value in a field. Lastly, we have the value column. The value column is where you list what you would want that key to set based on selection. Just like with the key column, you do not have to call out the field those values are in, but you must enter them in exactly as the context has them. That is the high level rundown of what a lookup table is. If you still can't fully connect the dots from that explanation, don't panic. I'm going to walk through two real world scenarios that a facilities team would use for a lookup table. With that, let's get started. First, we're going to go ahead and look at the automation that I created, set up. That way we can see how it works, what fields are setting what, and then we'll submit an example ticket so we can see how that looks and the automation's running. To look at the automations, we're going to go to project settings, and then in project settings, we're going to click on automation. Here, I have two automations that are using lookup tables. I have assigned impact based on urgency, and set facilities vendor based on office selection. We're gonna go ahead and look at facilities vendor first. So both of these automations are going to go off when an issue is created. This is so that way it's going to run the minute the issue is submitted. That way we can get started on the information that we need to know. For this specific facilities vendor based on office location, I want this to only run on the request type report a maintenance issue. I don't want it to run when it is for an event, a general question. I just want this to be for maintenance so that way the facilities team knows what vendor they need to contact to complete this maintenance. So therefore we have that condition for the request type. Now we're going to go ahead and look at the lookup table. So we're going to break this down for what you see here. So right now we have the lookup table variable name. So this variable I call facilities vendor. This is what I'm going to reference when I want to say, look at this table, get this value. Now we have our key and value. The key I have here office locations. So the office locations are Tampa, Florida, Austin, Texas, Burbank, California, and Baltimore, Maryland. In the value section, we have our vendor facilities. So these are the people who we would contact to perform that maintenance. So Tampa, Florida has Bayside Building Services, Austin, Texas is Cowboy Repairs, Burbank, California is Mythical Repair Service, and Baltimore, Maryland is Raven Maintenance. This is where our if else is essentially coming to place. So if Burbank, California is selected for office location, we want to assign to mythical repair service. Rather than having a handful of if else's for individual ones, we're combining it into this lookup table. Just to make sure that we know the value that it's going to spit out, we're going to do a value to the audit log. In order to call that audit log and get the value of that table, we're going to use that facilities vendor dot get dot get is how it's going to look at the table. And then we're calling out issue custom field 10220.value. 10220 is going to be the office location that we have listed here. So that way we are going to say, look at the selection from this value, which is, for example, Burbank, California. Dot value. Dot value is going to look at the value that we set. So Burbank, California should set mythical repair service. And then we're going to take that same log action and we're going to put it into the edit field. Now we're going to edit facilities vendor and we're going to place that value it gives directly in that issue field. Once you go ahead and create these, make sure you always hit save and that it's enabled. Let's go ahead and look at our other automation. We have assign impact based on urgency. This is an automation that necessarily wouldn't be specific to 
report a maintenance issue. However, for the example, we're going to make it so it's only running on report a maintenance issue. Just like the last one, we're having this when the issue is created. That way we automatically know the urgency. So we're going to go ahead and look at this lookup table. I called this lookup table urgency. Now we have our key and value. Our key is going to be the impact field. So we have extensive slash widespread, significant slash large, moderate slash limited, and minor slash localized. And based on the impact, we want to select the urgency. So extensive is going to assign critical, significant we want to set large, moderate should be medium, and minor should be low urgency. So that is our if else statement that we're putting in there for those fields. So just like last time, we're going to add a value to the audit log and we're going to call upon that table variable, which is urgency.get. It's going to reference the values in this lookup table. It is grabbing the custom field 10,004. 10,004 is the impact field. Dot value is going to look at the value that is for that custom field. So if minor slash localized selected, the value to set is low. So in this audit log, it should display low. And then finally, we're going to edit the issue. We're going to edit the urgency field and we are going to set the value to display low in here. Just like last time, once you have your automation created, make sure you hit save, it's enabled. And now we have our two automations. So let's go see how that looks. I'm going to go ahead to the portal and we're going to submit a maintenance issue. And we're going to say that lights are out on the second floor. There we go. So we're going to say the second floor lights of the Burbank office are not turning on. The light switch is not working. So now we're going to select the affected office, which is going to be Burbank, California. And then we're going to select the impact. We're going to say that significant slash large, while it's not dire, the entire floor lights being out is pretty significant. So now that we have all of our information, we're going to go ahead and click send. And now once this creates, we are going to click on this link in the breadcrumb trail to go to the agent view of this issue. And now in the agent view, we can see the information I filled out. We can see here that based off the office location, it set the facilities vendor. And based on the impact, it set the urgency. And to double check those, we can go to the audit log of these ones and we can check what that value was. So we can see here that based off of Burbank being selected, it did find the mythical repair service to set, which is what was put in the edit field. And in the impact based on urgency, if we go to the audit log, we can see here that based on what was selected, for significant, high was set as the urgency, and then it was put in via that edit action. And that's how lookup tables in Jira service management can simplify your automations. Instead of relying on long, complex if-else conditions, lookup tables provide a clean, scalable way to map values dynamically based on issue fields. Whether you're assigning vendors, setting urgency, or routing requests, lookup tables make automation more efficient and easier to maintain. I hope this walkthrough gave you a clear understanding of how lookup tables work and how you can start using them in your own Jira instance. If you haven't tried them yet, now's the perfect time to streamline your workflows and reduce manual work.